Low back pain is so common, four out of every 10 adults in America has low back pain right now. So if you're watching this video, that will be you 85% of the time, meaning that in your adult life, you, you are 85% likely to experience undiagnosed low back pain. Low back pain is extremely common, and uh, there's all kinds of sources for it. Most of the time, you experience low back pain, it's going to be this vague, nebulous pain in your lumbar regions, in your low back, that will be difficult to describe and even more challenging to diagnose if it's soft tissue only. So today, we're gonna to talk about one of the primary causes of low back pain, sacroiliac joint dysfunction, uh, what it looks like, what it feels like, and then what to do about it. Let's get into it. Hey, my name's Coach Josh, and I'm a proud veteran who's had the honor to work with United States Army soldiers, professional roller derby athletes, and everyone in between. And today, I help people think holistically to overcome age, injuries, and the disease of conventional thinking to live their best life. Let's go. One of the biggest mistakes that you can make when it comes to dealing with lower back pain and injury is taking a break, holding still, or resting until things pass. The reason for this is the body doesn't heal itself, doesn't balance itself, doesn't restore itself at rest. It actually restores itself in motion and during training. So it might feel safer and better for you to take it easy and take a break, but what you actually need to do is get your butt moving. Another mistake I see people make, and I've made this too, when I was dealing with my back injuries, is trying to work around it or only work the upper body. Now, that makes sense in the short run, right? Like, so if you don't know what's going on, of course you wanna keep training. But the problem is, if you're just focused on what you can do, you just get better and better at doing one thing that's actually unrelated to healing your back. So instead of focusing on just the upper body or just the things that feel good, you actually want to take a counterintuitive and more integrated approach. Another mistake that people make when they're dealing with their back pain is they do passive modalities only, passive interventions only, things like acupuncture, chiropractic, massage, things that you don't really have to do anything and somebody else is working on you and they're doing the work for you. That, that might feel good, but it doesn't actually get to the heart of the issue. So it serves as a distraction and it keeps you from moving forward. Instead, we want to take a different track. So that wait and see approach is going to cost you time, energy, money. Most importantly, however, it's going to cost you quality of life because you're not doing the things that you need to do. You're not having as much fun because you're in pain all the time. You're opting out of certain activities and you're spending more time going to the doctor or just sitting on the couch feeling sorry for yourself when you could turn your greatest weakness into your greatest source of strength and bring forth the warrior within. The truth is that none of these mistakes are actually that bad for you. The most important consequence to all of these different avoidance strategies is not that you're gonna damage your back, but where you're gonna waste yourself some time, some energy, and money not solving the problem. So I implore you to, yes, take a break. Maybe get some medical support, but as soon as you can, as soon as you can wrap your mind around it, you wanna dive directly into the problem and have that approach mindset so that you can use the obstacle as your opportunity. In the words of the great Paul Cech, if you cannot, then you must. So the obstacles to function or the limitations of your body become the purpose of the program. And for this SI joint restoration program, what we're trying to do is restore perfect stability and function to the hip. And we do that by releasing, lengthening, and straightening, strengthening certain muscles. We're gonna use a lacrosse ball or a foam roller to release the glutes, the hamstrings, the TFL, the quadriceps, all the muscles that really impact the orientation of the hip. Then we lengthen them with some static holds, some long, slow breathing during a static hold to accentuate the lengthening process of each particular stretch. 
So what we've done is all those tight muscles that have lots of adhesions or sticking points, we've released them with the, some counter pressure. Then we've stretched and lengthened those muscles. After that, we begin to activate doing some very simple uh, kneeling quad extensions. We do some hamstring walkouts. We do some breath paced, stiff legged deadlifts. We do all of these for really short sets of 10 or even five reps will be meaningful, but we do them to activate the newly lengthened tissue. And then we superset or create circuits to strengthen those tissues with a single leg drop. So we're keeping the hamstring long and the quad tight as we lower each one leg to the ground while we lift the other one up. So we've got this scissoring effect where one leg is pausing in the air while the other leg drops. That keeps the hamstring long and keeps the abs stabilizing, the, the internal oblique specifically, stabilizing the pelvis. Then the L crunch, the L sit crunch, sitting at a 90 degree angle, just the upper abs, just the thoracic spine bends to be able to touch your toes. This is going to be a burner of an ab workout if you do it right, but also help you lengthen those hamstrings and more recruit uh, your hamstrings in that lengthened position so that they're more likely to stay after you've stretched them. And then a single leg hip bridge where we can really isolate the glute by bending the knee at 90 degrees and keeping that hip flexor uh, uh, tight at 90 degrees so that only that glute can extend that hip. And that is really going to prime the hamstrings, the glutes, the abs for the work that we need to do, which will do that work in the format of an adductor side plank for sets of five breaths, or if you're doing the dynamic version, five repetitions of uh, five, five dips um, per leg. Then we'll switch to a sumo kettlebell deadlift or, or a dumbbell sumo deadlift. So this in this event, or in this drill, the implement is in between your legs, and it's almost like you're setting it down behind you as you hinge over to stretch the glutes and the hamstrings and maximally contract them, pressing out through the outside of the shoe and driving your hip forward to get maximal glute recruitment, pausing at the top for two seconds, and then setting it down again. The narrow split stance deficit squat, so your one foot is up on a deficit, up on a plate in this case, about two and a half inches off the ground, and then your back foot is set such that the knee is able to really touch the floor in the same line as, that, uh, as the heel of your lead leg. And this forces you, if your body, if your torso is upright, it forces you to stretch the quad of the back leg while you're strengthening the glutes and the hamstrings of the lead leg. So it's, it's a dynamic exercise, but it's also really safe for the SI joints. So it's a great way to get those hips to do two different things while you strengthen them. We'll flip over to an inchworm where you're lengthening the spine, reaching those toes and hands as far out as you can go, and then bringing them back in. So you're doing a hamstring stretch every time, but you're also getting maximum length on the lats. You're also contracting the glutes, or not glutes, but the abs. So everything is working together here. Then you're going to continue to flow into an A-frame, doing uh, a, a, basically a downward dog cross-body toe tap so that you're activating those hamstrings and your, your abs at the same time. The spine loves that. The hips love that. This is really teaching your body to work together. And then finally, ending in a perfect back extension with a gentle bend in the knees. So it's almost like a deadlift position or an athletic stance where you're going to touch the ground, you're going to use the glutes and the hamstrings to lift you up into the air, coming into that perfect spinal extension at the lumbar spine and the thoracic spine. Upper back is flexed, triceps are on, everything works. And you can make this exercise as hard or as easy as you want based on the position of your arms. So the further out you're reaching overhead, the more tension that you're gonna create in the upper body, in the hamstrings, and in the low back. So all these together is basically a perfect storm working all the muscles in the proper sequence in the proper way to stabilize that sacroiliac joint, help you build muscle, help you get confident moving in these different directions. And if you can do this circuit pretty handily for a full 20 minutes without taking a break, you're, you know, and you're feeling it in all the proper muscles, you're basically ready to do a full on strength conditioning program uh, once you get done with this. So 
test this out, use it to uh, stabilize your lumbar spine, stabilize your sacroiliac joint, and bring forth the warrior within.